before I start off this video, guys, I just want to make something very clear. Uh, I, I've noticed that the Poco fan base has a tendency to be very aggressive and very rude in the comments, and I'm not going to tolerate that. If you guys have something to say, if you don't like the video, if I said something wrong, please let me know down in the comments below, but there's a very positive and nice way of doing it. You don't have to be rude. You do not have to insult me, my intelligence, my appearance, whatever it is. If I see any kind of negativity in the comments, something that's unnecessarily rude, uh, if you guys are uh, insulting other people in the comments, I will start removing comments. I'm not going to give you a platform uh, to do this stuff. I mean, you can go do it on another video if you want, but I'm not going to give it to you on my own video. Uh, if you guys want to have a discussion, I am more than happy. In fact, that's what I want. I would love to have a conversation with you guys about what you think and what your ideas are. But if you guys aren't able to do that in a mature manner, I'm not going to give you the platform. So that being said, uh, enjoy the video, guys, and I look forward to hearing from you. So this is the Poco phone, and the Poco phone has been extremely popular this year, and it just got even more popular after MKBHD did his blind camera phone test. And the entire premise of this phone was that it was a $200, I'm sorry, a $300 phone that was basically a flagship. It had every single flagship spec you could want, and it looked like a flagship too in a lot of ways. It had the notch design, uh, it has a dual camera, blah, 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 blah. So a lot of good things going for it. However, what the one thing that I could never wrap my head around or was always curious about was the $300 price. So let me just break down the Poco, uh, Poco Phone F1 pricing to you guys. There are four variants, uh, and one of the variants is just a special edition, so I don't know how much that counts. But so the first one is six gigs of RAM with 64 GB of storage. That starts at uh, 19,999 rupees or $278. The second variant is uh, 2 GB, I'm sorry, 6 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage, and that comes in at 21, 22,000 rupees, uh, which is roughly $305. Now, the third one, that's where the biggest price jump comes in at, is the 8 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage, which costs 26,000 rupees or $360. And the last special edition phone, uh, the armored version, which comes with the Kevlar backing instead of this plastic, is uh, also an 8 gigs of RAM with 256 of storage, which costs 27,000 rupees, which translates over to about $375. So from the uh, lowest model to the highest model of the range, the Poco phone goes from $270 to about $370. So only $100 of range in there. However, the Poco phone is still able to pack the punch that most phones twice as price can't, and definitely not what most flagships are priced at. Now, uh, it's there are some compromises made, but on paper, the the phone looks exactly like a flagship should. All the highest specs, all the best sensors, uh, the design is pretty good. So where does the three hundred dollar price come from? You know, is it just every other manufacturer overcharging, or is it Xiaomi underselling them? And that's what I'm going to answer right now. And that is yes, Xiaomi is under undercutting everybody. What they're using is a tactic called predatory pricing. Uh, if you guys studied business or under, uh, or have have experience with business, you'll know what predatory pricing is. But for those of you who don't, in a quick way to say it is, predatory pricing is when a company introduces a product into a marketplace where there are already similar products, but they introduce their own product at a very low cost compared to the other. So I'm saying if uh, this phone is $300, the one that's next best to it is probably double the price or even 80% of it. So that is what the case is in reality. And they're undercutting the market because of one main target and that is market share. That's exactly what Xiaomi wants. So Xiaomi is the parent company of Poco. They're, it's actually a sub brand. It's not even a parent company. This is still referred to as the Xiaomi Poco phone most places. So the Xiaomi Poco phone uh, is undercutting the market to gain market share. And the reason behind it is simple. Xiaomi is really, really good when it comes to uh, the below $300 smartphone market. So uh, 100 to $250, they have a bunch of different smartphones and they are they're king of the hill in that segment. There's nobody that can really touch them. They give you the best specs, the best combination of everything possible, and the pricing is really aggressive there as well. But uh, in that market, they've been able to dominate. Whereas when it comes to the mid-range above 300, so the 300 to $400 market uh, and above that, they just haven't been able to get a hold on. They've uh, tried a lot of times in the past. A lot of them failed. Uh, they ended up pulling out uh, of the mid-range phones in India for a little while there. 
Uh, and it was just because the mid-range phones kind of didn't ever seem to click in India for Xiaomi. So they came up with the Pocophone. Uh, one, it kind of re-energized, it kind of gave them a fresh look completely. It was just, you know, complete rebranding there. Uh, two, they, they gave you some great specs for an uh, insane price. Nobody's heard of this, so it immediately created a lot of buzz, a lot of marketing, a lot of viral campaigns. Uh, and it also goes to show that, um, that Xiaomi is now going to be a big player in this segment. So that's what they wanted to do with this Poco phone. They wanted to bring back that mid market in under their house because they already had the lower markets uh, secured. The mid markets is something that they've been lacking on and that's their primary goal with the Poco phone. Now the Poco phone, I've tried to do a lot of research about trying to find out what the cost of the parts are or how much uh, you know, it's, it costs for them to build this. Unfortunately, I just couldn't find any uh, accurate information. So I'm not going to give you anything. But to, in my opinion, they're probably not making a lot of money on this. This is probably break even or something like, I don't know, 5% profit somewhere around there. So that's probably what Xiaomi makes per device. And that's nothing. That's peanuts compared to the price. It's, it's like making nothing. And they have to run an entire company, entire teams uh, dedicated to this phone development of it and all that. So now, are they all doing this out of goodwill? Are they doing it because, you know, the world is a great place and they want to help everybody? No, that's not what a company is for. They're doing this to gain this market share to make sure that people are within their brand. And once you're in a brand, as you guys know, once you start to favor a brand, you're not likely, you're not as likely to move out of that brand as long as they keep giving you something that you like. So, uh, I've been an iPhone user for the longest time and until recently I only bought iPhones, I only used iPhones. Uh, it was only once I started the YouTube channel, a little bit before that, that I started to dabble with Android phones. But for the longest time it's been iPhones only for me and even till date, if I was forced to ch stay with one company it would be Apple because that's just the way it is. Once I, you become loyal to a brand, there's a very low chance that you're going to move away from it. Same comes to Samsung, Nokia, Huawei, all these other brands, uh, OnePlus. Once you're loyal to them, it's really hard to break away and Xiaomi knows that. They're going to take advantage of that by making sure that once you're into this uh, Xiaomi, the Poco uh, brand, that you don't leave. That's where their target is and they're not just making money, uh, they're not just doing this for the profit share, they are making some money off the back end and that is through targeted ads, so they do use ads throughout the UI. It, some people do say it can be disabled. I've tried, you know, it does disable, but I do still notice them some random places. They are especially rampant in Xiaomi's own apps. So they have their own music videos, all those. Uh, their own apps are rampant with ads. Uh, some system UI apps, like the settings menu, I've seen multiple ads. Uh, sometimes I've seen them in folders as well. So if you open up a folder, uh, like apps with, with a folder, I've seen that on a friend's phone as well. So. Uh, the f uh, they're doing this because one, it helps them earn money from the back end. Two, it kind of it's it's just a win-win for them there because uh, users usually don't care too much about it. I personally do. I would absolutely I absolutely hate that. I don't want that, but it is what it is. Second, they probably won't admit it, and it's not been stated anywhere, but I know for a fact every tech company does this, and that is that they're tracking your data, your information, your usage, and they're using this information to either A, improve themselves, or B, sell it to others, which is probably what's happening. A lot of these companies, uh, for them, the most valuable thing is your data, your information, your usage information, because that is what is the most valued thing right now in the market. Uh, you know, try to find out, you know, all, there's a lot of uh, value behind information, especially real life data collected from people. That's something companies pay millions and millions and millions of dollars for every year. So think about that. You know, you are, that's, that's what you're getting. It's very simple that if you're not paying for the, the product in a way, if you're not paying the profits of the company, you're, they're making money somehow. You just have to think about how they're making that money. So this, all, all this being said, you might still say, Hey, it doesn't matter. Poco is a great brand. You know, they're doing things. Nobody's ever done $300 for a flagship phone. Uh, even if they, do, you know, at this price, I'm happy. It doesn't matter if they uh, give me ads or they try to sell me uh, something, their own services, blah, blah, blah. However, let me point something out. Xiaomi is not the first brand to do this. The first company to do this is a small little company you might have heard of known as OnePlus. OnePlus did the same exact thing four years ago. So in 2014, the OnePlus One came out. You want to guess how much? 
Yep, that sweet number, $300. It also had 64 gigs of storage. It had uh, an insane amount of RAM that time. I don't remember. It was definitely higher than what every other phone had. Uh, it had the latest Snapdragon processor, which all the flagships were using. So it was, in all the right terms, a flagship killer on paper. Uh, it had the Lineage OS in the first models, which was a nice light version of Android, which everybody seemed to love. So uh, the OnePlus One was exactly uh, mirroring the, what the Xiaomi's doing today. However, when you look at it just in four years, not much, in four years, OnePlus has doubled their almost base price. So it used to start at 300. Now the uh, base price for a OnePlus is very close to $600. It's $570 right now, but I am 100% sure when the OnePlus 7 comes out, that is gonna be a $600 phone. So from, f so from 300 to 600 in a matter of four years, how does that happen? That's what predatory pricing is for you guys. Uh, OnePlus shocked the market when it came out with the OnePlus One. Uh, it was in high demand. You could only buy it if there was invitations, blah, blah, blah. And that's how they really grew their brand. It was that shock factor. And now that their brand is so big, people buy their phones without even uh, having to do that much marketing. So OnePlus has become a stable brand. Like people actually know this. Uh, four years ago, they didn't. Four years ago, OnePlus was just, huh, what? 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 Say that again? What, what brand is that? That was what OnePlus was. Now, they are battling it out with the likes of Samsung, Apple, LG, Google, and they're actually holding their own. In fact, it is the fastest Android phone. And that's what I'm trying to say. Just because this phone is low priced doesn't mean it's bad, but just because it's priced low does not mean it's gonna stay that way forever. What, uh, what Poco is gonna do and I'm sure about this is as time goes on, so the next version that comes out, they're probably gonna increase the price just a little bit. Not so much that it'll hurt, but enough that they'll be like, hey, look, we're, we're giving you so much. Can you not just give us a little bit more? Just a little bit, you know, help us out here. We, we have families to feed, that kind of logic. And that what will happen is the customers will be okay. They'll be okay, they'll be okay. So as a few cycles go on, you'll start to realize, wait a minute, this phone is way more expensive than it used to be, isn't it? You, you'll have that feeling because I had the same thing uh, when I was buying the OnePlus 5T. Uh, it was so much more expensive than I remember OnePlus being and uh, it just goes on till date. So every single OnePlus I've bought goes up in price, goes up in price by a very little bit, but over time that all adds up. So that is how Xiaomi Poco phone is so <clears throat> is priced so well. They're predatory. Uh, what they're doing is trying to gain market share which is gonna be helpful for them in the long run. They're putting ads in the phone, they're selling your, your data and services, they're providing services that they hope you'll subscribe to and that'll be a way for them to make money as well. And overall, it's not a bad thing, but it's just that people don't seem to realize this is what's happening and that's the worst part. Uh, now, if you guys are on board for it, if you look at any Xiaomi Pocophone ad, any kind of uh, product information page, nothing will ever specify that there's gonna be ads in the UI. Not one place. If you find it, please let me know because that would be interesting, but I have not, till date, found anything that says that MIUI might have ads or something like that. It was only admitted when people actually started getting ads in the phone where the company really, yeah, we're gonna put ads in your phone. Uh, sorry about that, we should have let you know, but we didn't because we didn't want to. That was what was going on. So that's something I'm not happy with. What else is lying beneath the surface? You know, what are, who else is tracking me? What else is going on? So I don't like that trans uh, that kind of uh, just not knowing what's going on with a the brand. They're definitely doing good things, but there's a reason they they can do these things, and I just hope people realize that. So if you guys. Uh, have a Poco phone. Let me know if you guys know about this, if you knew about this, if you linked it to OnePlus, because a lot of people don't. A lot of people see OnePlus as the overpriced phone now, but just four years ago, it was exactly where the Poco phone is at right now. Exactly. It's funny how close they are. It's almost ironic, to be honest with you guys. It's just so, it's it, just seeing the two mirroring each other is weird. And I'm sure that as the next phone comes out, we'll see a price increase. And I want you guys to tell me what you think about it, especially Poco phone owners. You know, what are your thoughts? Did you know that this was the way that it was priced and why they were pricing it this way? Uh, have you gotten ads? How do you deal with those? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Happy holidays. I'll catch you in the next one.